welcome to the fifth lecture of week 3 where we will discuss design of flanges. If you remember lecture 2, 3 and 4 there we have discussed details of flanges and design procedure. In this particular lecture we will discuss, we will solve a few examples related to design of flanges. So, let us focus on example 1. In this example we need to design a loose type flange with plain face. So, loose type flange that uh, you must have understood that uh, it is basically lying over the pipe and second point we have is the plain face. So, that face we have discussed in lecture 3 and this flange is to be designed for a reactor shell with 1.8 meter outside diameter. So, capital DO is given as 1.8 and 0.018 thickness GO. Now, what is GO? If you remember, GO is basically width of upper section of welded neck. Okay. So, if GO is given, we can, un we should understand that it is the width of lower section of welded neck. Other specifications are design temperature is 200, design pressure 2.2 mega Newton per meter square, allowable stresses for flange material and bolting up material are equal and which is 120 mega Newton per meter square, gasket material is given as corrugated soft aluminum metal asbestos filled where minimum design seating stress is 20 mega Newton per meter square, gasket factor is given as 2.5 and minimum actual gasket width is 10 mm. Ratio of gasket internal diameter to shell outside to shell outside diameter is 1.01, .01, corrosion allowance is 0, well joint efficiency factor is 1. What we need to find is effective gasket seating width minimum bolting area and which amongst the following bolts will be used for bolting the flange. Here we are given 4 bolts M36 into 3, 39 into 3, 42 into 3 and 45 into 3 and G1 is given as 1.415 G0. So, basically once I know G1, it means the flange is a, a welded neck only if G naught value is given, it may be welded neck or it may be tapered neck, but G1 will decide whether it is welded neck or not. Next I need to compute is bolt circle diameter, then flange outside diameter after adding 2 centimeter assumed gap between end of bolt circle and end of flange. Estimate various loads and moment under operating as well as bolting up condition and then calculate the flange thickness for Poisson's ratio given as 0.3. So, in this example we are covering almost all parts related to design of flanges. So, let us start to solve these parts one by one. First of all we have to find out effective gasket seating width and for this purpose I have to calculate the gasket dimension that is width of the gasket and for that purpose I will start with the the given ratio d i by capital D naught is 1.01, .01, d i is the inner diameter of gasket. So, d i would be 1.01 .01 into 1.8, so 1.818 meter we can found, we can find as d i. Further, I am having d i by d naught and here this d naught is a small d, not the capital D because this d is basically this is small d o is the outer diameter of gasket. Okay. So, d i by d o both are related to the gasket and here y is given as 20 and m is given as 2.5 other value we can put and then we can calculate d o. So, outer diameter of uh, gasket is coming out as 1.974 meter, inner diameter is equal to 1.818. So, considering these two value, we will calculate minimum gasket width and which comes out as 78 mm. Now, if you remember the problem there, we are given minimum actual gasket width should be 10 mm and here I am getting 78 mm. So, whatever would be higher that I need to take, but here the comparison of this value with the 
actual minimum gasket width given in the standard or given in the table that is required. Here I am having minimum gasket width which comes out as 78 and if you remember the problem there we have uh, uh, seen that minimum actual gasket seating width is 10 mm. So, higher value of uh, calculated and given value I have to take as value of n, but here I need to compare the given value with the calculated value. So, n final would be 78 mm and therefore, B naught value we can find as n by 2 which is equal to 39 mm. This B naught is basic gasket seating width which is used to calculate effective gasket seating width and here I am having two condition. In this case, this condition will be applicable because uh, B naught is greater than 6.3 and therefore, B we can find as 15.61 mm. So, in this way we can calculate effective gasket seating width. Now, this seating width we will use to calculate value of G, where G is the diameter of uh, uh, reaction of load in the gasket. Next part of the problem is to calculate minimum bolting area and whatever effective gasket width will be computed that we will use to calculate value of G and as this condition will be applicable, G would be computed as G naught minus 2 B. So, 1.974 minus 2 into 15.61 divided by 1000 because that is given in mm. So, G comes out as 1.94278. So, once I know the G value, I have to find out load at operating condition and bolting up condition and then we will find out respective area and then we can calculate the bolting area. So, Using value of G as well as uh, design pressure, I can calculate uh, capital H by this expression which comes out as 6.522 mega Newton. HP we can calculate by this expression pi G into 2 B into MP and that comes out as 1.048 mega Newton. Total load in this case would be 7.57 mega Newton. And then we have to focus on bolting up condition where Wg I need to find by this expression where Wg is equal to pi Gb into y. Putting all these values over here, we can have Wg as 1.0955 mega Newton. So, here we have to find out Sg or So and So is basically allowable stress of bolt material at design temperature. And considering that we can find out bolting area at operating condition and which is equal to Wg by S naught and which is equal to 0 0.06308 meter square. And further we have ABC which is equal to Wg by Sg which is equal to 1.9055 by 120 and that is equal to 0 0.01588. Okay. Now, what is the point you have to focus on is this point. In this particular case, I am taking Sg and So constant and which is equal to 120 mega Newton per meter square. Now, why it is so? Because if you remember the design procedure there, we have discussed that So is the allowable stress of bolt material at operating condition or at design temperature. Okay? And Sg is the allowable stress of bolt material at atmospheric temperature. And here in this problem, allowable stress of bolt material is given as 120. Okay? So, now why these two value I am taking equal? Because if you remember what is the design temperature, design temperature is 200. And if you remember allowable stress table, okay, which we have discussed in term which we have discussed in terminologies and many previous lectures, their minimum value of allowable stress is available at 250 degree Celsius and design temperature is less than 250. Therefore, I have to take S0 at 250 degree Celsius. And if I am considering atmospheric condition, atmospheric condition we can have 25 degree or so, but because allowable stress value is not available for um, temperature less than 250, 
for atmospheric condition also I have to take value at 250. Therefore, in this particular case both allowable stress value at operating condition as well as at bolting up condition are equal because temperature is 250 in both case. I hope you are getting this. For example, if uh, design temperature is given as 300 or 350, so you have to take S naught at 350 and SG at 250. I hope I am clear. So, here I have computed A naught as well as ABC and minimum bolting area will be considered maximum of these two and which is equal to 0 0.063. So, that area we will use to calculate the optimum bolt and bolt circle diameter. Okay. So, let us start the calculation of that. If you remember the problem, it is given as we have 4 different bolts and I have to choose the optimum bolts among these. Okay. So, for that I know G1 value, I know G0, so I can calculate G1 as 0.02547. First bolt I am having is M36 into 3 where root area I have to calculate it, where root area I have to calculate as equal to pi by 4 36 minus 6 whole square and which comes out as 706.858 mm square. Now minimum number of bolts would be minimum bolting area divided by root area. So, it comes out as 89.127 and then you have to take actual number of bolt which should be multiple of 4 to this and then that value comes out as 92. Once I am having the actual number of bolt I will calculate C1 and C2. So, C1 would be equal to NBS by pi which is equal to 92 into 80 by pi. Now, from where that 80 comes, it is available in this table. I am having bolt 36 into 3. So, BS value is given as 80. So, that I have kept over here. So, C1 comes out as 2.343. Further C2 I have to calculate and which is equal to ID plus 2 G1 plus R. So, ID is basically inner diameter of uh, flange and which is equal to outer diameter of pipe. So, C2 would be equal to 1.8 plus 2 G1 which we have already calculated R we have taken as 0 0.05 which is given in this table corresponding to 36 into 3 bolt. So, considering these value we can have C2 as 1.951 meter and then I have to find out difference between C1 and C2 and it comes out as 0.392 meter. In the similar line I will calculate for other bolts also like for M36 into 3 we can calculate root area as this minimum number of bolt I can calculate as 73.658 and next multiple of 4 is available as 76. So, that we have taken as actual number of bolt. C1 is NBS by pi. So, if you consider this uh, uh, 39 into 3 bolt, it has 86 as uh, BS and 52 as R. So, BS as 86 we can consider in C1 which comes out as 2.0805. And C2 will be equal to 1.8 plus 2 and this is G1 and this is corresponding R which is 52 mm. Okay. Now, if you see this table all values are given in mm even these values. Okay, All these values are given in mm. So, C1 minus C2 in this case is 0 0.1256. For next bolt which is 42 into 3, we can find out root area which comes out as 1017.876 mm square. Minimum number of bolts 61.89, actual bolts would be 64. C1 we can find as 64 into 91 by pi. So, this is corresponding to 42 into 3, 91 would be the BS that we can use over here. And then C1 comes out as 1.854 meter. Further, I am having C2 where I will use value of R and which is equal to 55 mm that we will use over here. And then we can find C2 as 1.961 meter. 
So, C 1 minus C 2 will be equal to minus 0 0.107 meter. In the similar line I can calculate for bolt 45 into 3 where actual number of bolts are 56 and in this case it is 45 into 3 B is 96 and R is 57. So, these values I can use over here to calculate C 1 and C 2 respectively and then C 1 can be found as 1.711 meter and C 2 as 1.965 mm difference of these two would, would be minus 0.254. So, in this way we have calculated all parameters related to 4 bolts. Now, we will summarize the results of these bolts. So, summary is given in this table where I am having the bolt C 1, C 2 and C 1 minus C 2. Okay. So, you can see here that uh, I have to choose the bolt which has C 1 minus C 2 positive and least. So, it will come out for this particular bolt and accordingly the bolt which I have to choose is 39 into 3. So, 39 into 3 will be used for bolting the flange. Okay. So, once I have chosen the bolt, I can see the value of bolt circle diameter and if you consider this table, bolt circle diameter would be C2 of the respective bolt. Okay. So, now bolt circle diameter would be C2 of that bolt which comes out as 1.9549 meter and then we have to find out flange outside diameter. Okay, flange outside diameter how I can calculate because C is there. So, that C plus 2 into bolt radius plus 0 0.04. So, C is coming as 1.9549 into bolt diameter or you can use 2 into bolt radius it is same and then 0 0.04 why this is 0 0.04 because it is given that gap between the outer uh, uh, diameter of bolt circle to the outer edge of the flange is given as 20 mm. So, in that case we are considering 40 mm because both side I have to consider to calculate the diameter. So, therefore, 40 mm is added over here. So, total flange outside diameter comes as 2.0339 meter and next I have to uh, estimate the load and movement under operating as well as bolting up condition because now I have to calculate the thickness of flange. So, let us focus on operating condition and then we will move to bolting up condition. For operating condition we have 3 load W1, W2, W3 and uh, you can find that W1 as pi b square by 4 into p which comes out as this. W2 you can have as 0 0.924 and W3 is 1.048. So, considering all these load we can have total load of 7.57 mega Newton. So, this load you can also observe while computing the bolting area. Okay. Now, once I am having this bolt I have to calculate the arms to find out the moment. So, these arms are given as A 1, A 2 and A 3. So, A 1 is equal to C minus B by 2. So, here I can put the value C minus B by 2 which comes out as 0 0.07745 meter. A 3 I can consider as 0 0.00606 meter which is nothing but C minus G. And in the similar line I can calculate A 2 as A 1 and A 3 here this is not A 2 this is A 3 by 2 which is equal to 0 0.041755 meter and then considering all these arms as well as load I can calculate the moment at operating condition and which comes out as 0 0.4785 mega Newton meter. Further I have to focus on bolting up condition where mg is equal to w into A 3 and w we can define as a m plus a b by 2 into s g. So, s g is basically the allowable stress of bolt material and a b is given as number of actual bolt into root area which comes out as 0 0.065. So, root area you will choose corresponding to 39 into 3 bolt. Okay. So, considering all these value we can have W as 
mega Newton and then you can find out mg as 0.054654 mega Newton meter. Further I have to calculate m as maximum of m0 as well as mg and which can be taken as 0.4785 mega Newton meter which is corresponding to m0 value. Now once I am having the flange moment I will calculate the thickness of flange where Poisson's ratio is given as 0. 3 okay so here this is the expression to calculate the thickness where m we have already uh, computed in last slide cf i have to take as 1 as a initial guess b is basically bore diameter or inner diameter of flange or outer diameter of shell sfo is the allowable stress of shell material and y is the factor which we can compute through this here this is basically capital Y, this is not small y. So to find out Y value I have to calculate K which comes out, uh, I have to, to find out Y value I have to consider K as A by B which comes out as 1.13 and then putting K value as well as mu in this expression I can find Y as 15.9066 and then we can calculate thickness of flange that is T square is equal to 0 0.4785 that is M into CF which I have taken as 1 as initial guess divided by B into SFO into Y. So, T comes out as 0 0.1877 meter. Considering this T we will find out revised value of CF which is given as BS by 2d plus t. So, b s we have to consider as revised value which can be computed by this expression where c is the bold circle diameter which we have chosen. So, b s is equal to pi into 1.9546 divided by n where n is the actual number of bolt corresponding to 39 into 3 bolt and therefore, b s is 80.509 mm. So, that b s I have kept over here then this is nothing but 2 d because 39 is there. So, 78 mm I can consider as 2 d and this thickness I have considered over here to calculate c f and corresponding value of c f is 0 0.5513. Okay. Once I have calculated c f 0 0.5513 I will use this c f in this expression in place of 1 then t I can find out and then further considering this t value at this place I can find revised value of c f which comes out as 0 0.6095. Considering this c f I will calculate t which is 0 0.1466 and then c f and then t and then c f and then t like this we keep on moving till two consecutive values of t would be equal almost. So, here we have a final value of uh, thickness is 0 0.1455 which is almost equal to the previous value of t and therefore, this we can consider as final thickness of flange. So, in this way we have computed all parts for flange design and I hope the method is clear to you. Now, we will consider another example for design of flange. Now, here we have example 2 in which we are designing again a loose type flange which is used to join two parts of shell with OD as 0.8 meter. Design this flange for following specification that is plain face, design pressure is given like this and design temperature here as 400. Allowable stress of shell material 120 mega Newton per meter square, allowable stress of flange material at design temperature is given as 130 mega Newton per meter square and bolts are made with IS 2000 to 1962 2A material. Gasket material is soft aluminum solid flat metal, ratio of gasket internal diameter to shell outside diameter is 1.02, corrosion allowance 0 and joint efficiency factor 1 and all these parameters we can use for designing. Now, what I have to find is effective gasket seating width as we have computed in last example. 
we have to choose the optimum bolt or suitable bolt among these flange outside diameter and flange thickness. So, let us start the part 1 of this. So, before starting solution of this we have summarized here a few parameter as outer diameter pointed, design pressure is given as 2.5 mega Newton per meter square, allowable stress of shell and bolt, allowable stress of shell and flange are given as 120 and 130 mega Newton per meter square respectively. Now, allowable stress of bolt at atmospheric temperature and that at design temperature. So, if you remember the problem, we are given material for bolt and that is IS 2002-1962-2A, okay. And uh, in this case, design temperature is 400, okay. So, 7.4 would be the allowable stress of bolt material at design temperature. And here, 9.6 will be considered as allowable stress of bolt material at atmospheric temperature because value lesser than this uh, is uh, value at lesser temperature than 250 is not available in this table. And further, if you consider the gasket material, we are given soft aluminum solid flat metal as gasket material and corresponding to this, I am having 4 as a value of M and 61 as seating stress and 6 is the actual minimum width of the gasket. Okay, so, all these values I have taken over here that is uh, uh, allowable stress at design temperature 7.4 at atmospheric pressure 9.8 and this is the conversion because if you remember these values are in kg force per mm square. So, conversion of this to mega Newton per meter square is 9.8067 and that value I have uh, converted and respective value are given over here in mega Newton per meter square. Y we have taken from gasket table which is 61 and M we can consider as 4. So, D i by D o is 1.02. Uh, other parameters are uh, you can see from the example. So, effective gasket width again I have to find D i because uh, I know D i by capital D o as 1.02. So, here this is the value of D i d o by d i you can find by this expression and then d o i can find as uh, 0.83677. Minimum gasket width is found as 0 0.01038 it means 10.38 mm and which has to compare with the value given in the table and that is 6 mm larger among these we can consider as minimum gasket width, so which is 10.38 mm. Now, outer diameter of gasket will not be changed as whatever we have computed value of n that I have taken as it is. So, it will be equal to the previous value. Basic gasket width I can find as B naught and that should be n by 2 if you remember because here I have, because here I have considered plane face and uh, further based on B naught as it is coming less than 6.3 mm, I can calculate effective gasket width equal to B naught and which comes out as 0 0.00519 and further we can calculate G that is the diameter of uh, load react that is the diameter of reaction of load in gasket and which comes out as 0 0.82638. Now, I have to choose the suitable bolt among these, okay. For that purpose, I have to calculate the bolting area and that we can calculate by operating condition as well as bolting up condition. So, for operating condition, this uh, W naught comes as 1.6094, H and HP we can found as we have discussed in the last example, WG we can consider as 0.82177 and uh, Based on that, we can find out area for operating condition and area for bolting up condition. 
so based on these value i can find area at operating condition and bolting up condition so at operating condition it is equal to 1.6096 divided by 72.569 which is the conversion of 7.4 kg force per mm square which is the allowable stress at design temperature and the area comes out as 0 0.022 in the similar line ag i am having as this uh, 0.8218 divided by 96.108 and which comes out as 0 0.0086 larger value among this I have to choose as a bolting area and that I can take as 0 0.02218 ok. And then considering this uh, bolting area and root area corresponding to these uh, bolts I can calculate minimum number of bolts as we did in last example. Now, next multiple of 4 of all these values are given here ok and then R and BS I can see from the bolt table and then considering these value we can calculate C1 and C2 and difference of C1 and C2 we can found and which is found positive and uh, minimum for 24 into 2. So, 24 into 2 can be chosen as uh, suitable bolt or optimum bolt and corresponding value of C2 I can choose as bolt circle diameter which comes out as 0 0.91245 for 24 into 2 bolt ok. And then flange diameter I can calculate as 0 0.95645 meter which is basically C plus bolt diameter that is 24 divide by 1000 which is already written over here plus 0 0.02. So, that should be 0 0.01 into 2 because in this case value is not known to me. So, I will take 10 mm as minimum value which is basically recommended minimum value for design of flange. So, considering all these values I can find out flange diameter as this and then I have to find out flange uh, thickness and for that purpose I have to calculate flange moment. So, for that I have calculated W1, W2, W3 and A1, A2, A3 as we did in last example and then we can find out uh, moment at operating condition and similarly moment at bolting up condition. So, controlling M would be larger from these two and that is given for bolting up condition ok. Now, k I have taken as a by b which is this and then y I can calculate as 10.9677 mu 0.3 I can take. Further cf I will take as 1 and then we can calculate thickness of flange which comes out as 0 0.0988 meter. Revised value of b s I have to take as 0 0.0 89 and considering this p s value I will find out c f and then I can calculate revised value of t and in the similar line I will keep on moving to calculate the thickness of t. So, in that way we can calculate the thickness of flange and then we can complete the design of flange. So, here we have solved two examples for design of flanges and I hope the method is clear to you. And here I am having some of the references to study about design of flanges and here we will summarize the video and in this video we will summarize for lecture 2, 3, 4 and 5 of week 3 because all these lectures were devoted to design of flanges ok. So, summary goes as flange is defined along with its utility, types of flanges and its facings are discussed. Gaskets its type and selection of it are discussed, bolt load its area and dimensions are discussed, design of flange considering operating condition as well as bolting up conditions are discussed and then we have solved a few example with detailed steps for design of flange and that is all for now. Thank you.